Six years ago, there was a lot of focus in the media and the news about a, a viral outbreak of Ebola. In the same way that there's a lot of focus today there is on coronavirus. And at that time, six years ago, 2014, I actually traveled to West Africa. Uh, I went to Liberia, which was where the Ebola outbreak was happening. Um, it was a bit weird, really, because the, the outbreak had started and we'd heard about it and then we were told it had died off. And we went to the country and there was absolutely no evidence of uh, any outbreak. And there was certainly uh, little or no concern that, that there was a serious uh, threat there. And, and we, so we, we believed that it, it had actually died out. What we discovered was when we came back that it was just, just before that significant growth phase, phase that infections go through. Uh, and then the infection skyrocketed. So in many ways, we were, we were like really lucky to, to uh, not be affected when we were there. And we didn't go to any of the places where it was really uh, concentrated, uh, but it was devastating for the country uh, after we left. Uh, it, it just had a terrible impact on the country in many ways. But that's not really what I want to share with you today. I'm reminded of that now. Uh, and I've seen a couple of things on Facebook recently that have made me reflect on my time there. I think the thing I really want to talk to you about is, I think I fell into the trap. I think I fell into the trap of being a white savior. And it's a word that's bandied around a lot at the moment and, and it's certainly been at the forefront for a number of years now, this idea of the white savior complex. It's probably, it's probably not actually not such a new idea, but I think it's come to the forefront now with a, a lot more awareness of to what that means and what the impact is. And I think if, if I can think of one specific moment that even when I was there in 2014, it made me feel incredibly uncomfortable. Um, one of the things that we were planning to do was help build a school um, uh, out in Liberia. And we'd been asked to bring uh, stuff with us that might be useful for the kids. And actually, I, I took out a huge suitcase full of Lego because that was something I loved as a child. And, and you know, my projection is that that's something that, that's universally um, useful. So I had a huge suitcase full of Lego and some clothes, some kids' clothes and some shoes, and I took them out. And we went to the school, and the school was half built. And at one end of this sort of central hallway area, uh, there was a slightly elevated area, uh, and then there was this sort of big open area in front of it but it was mostly earth on the ground and so the group of us were put on stage and we were sat down at the front of the stage and we were facing out into this open space so we were already in this elevated position we were being treated as sort of esteemed guests uh, and then the, the kids performed for us now, in many ways, I suppose, you know, you see in primary schools around the world, in Europe, in America, you know, kids performing for parents, but it didn't have that feel. It didn't have, it didn't have that, that essence to it. It was something quite different. It was the fact we were in this elevated position, the fact that there was, you know, all these speeches of gratitude. It, it, it just felt uncomfortable. You know, I wanted to be with the teachers and with the kids, not separate and apart from them. And so that was already a huge clue um, that it wasn't quite right. And, and I reflect on it now looking back and I, I, and I enter into this conversation and I'm not really sure where this is gonna go and I'm not really sure what my answer is to this, but what I do know is I'm asking myself this much bigger question, which is what was my motivation? You know, I went and I was very excited and there's no doubt it was an incredible experience. But if I look back, I wonder how much I've gained from that experience rather than the people that I met and the people I connected with. So we went to, you know, build or contribute to building to a school, um, although it wasn't really successful. Um, the school was probably paid for four or five times over because of theft and corruption and things going wrong. And it just it just didn't work. Giving money just didn't work. And 
once the school was built, it didn't work because there was no money to pay for the teachers. It wasn't a sustainable project. It wasn't a project that was owned within the community. It was a project that was entirely dependent on external contributions coming in. And once they dried up, the school failed. And so I think the school is scratching by now, but it's nothing like the vision that was set out to be. And, and I think this was repeated. You know, we, we went into villages to, to um, give people water filters so they could have clean water. Uh, and I think at the moment, in the moment, it was fantastic. You know, they could drink water out of this well without having to boil it or treat it in any way. And that was amazing. But the people in the villages didn't really know how to manage the filters or just didn't care. And they went back, you know, they thought it was a novelty or a bit of magic or something on the day. Uh, and I've heard many stories of, you know, what's happened to those filters. They've fallen into, into uh, disuse because they get blocked. They don't know how to clean them. No one showed them how to clean them. Um, and so it's, it's a great idea that just didn't quite work. And, and I think about some of the things that we did, you know, we spent time with a lot of kids. And we spent time in a lot of situations, so we were taking pictures, we were making videos, we were with vulnerable and exposed people. And in Europe or in the US, there's no way that people without appropriate certification or background checking or appropriate qualifications would be allowed to do the things that we do. And yet it was treated as being okay because we were from the West and we would be we would know better, we would be better, we were wealthy, how could we be questioned? And so it was, it, it was just out of balance. It was, it was not an even exchange of energy and talent and experience. So I think more recently I've been reflecting on this and, and my very good friend Natasha, who has continued to work in Africa and has really started to take on these ideas and look at sustainability and look at what it's like to really make a difference. And she shared something with me that had a few questions on it. And I just wanna share a few of those with you now. I've already talked about one of them, which is, you know, what was my motivation? You know, what, what was I doing there? And I think it was being caught up in this this making a documentary and being a leader of a group of coaches and it was very exciting this transformational journey but it wasn't really about the Liberians it was much more about us on reflection and I think you know another thing what qualified me to help I'm um, well actually nothing my ability to pay an airfare was really pretty much my only qualification uh, I, I had a desire to help I really wanted to make a difference but I didn't understand how to make a difference and um, and that you know, looking back now, that would be a question I'd really have to explore now if I was to return. You know, was it an equal exchange? Well, I, I don't think it was. I think it was an exchange where we as a group got a lot out of it. And I think there was some sporadic support and help given, but it wasn't sustainable and it wasn't long term. Um, you know, there's a question now, you know, the sort of gap year, uh, tour of the world on social media, Instagram, etc. Uh, maybe not as important to me, but you know, a, a question that I think is a great question is, you know, would you do what you were doing, or would I do what I was doing if I couldn't post it on social media? You know, that's a fantastic question to ask. Uh, and another thought is, you know, were we creating a responsible partnership? I think when we went, we thought we were. But I think we thought we had, you know, a partnership with some agencies on the ground and. Uh, uh, and it was a, a sustainable, or at least potentially sustainable activity. Uh, but actually, on, you know, with hindsight, it wasn't at all. The, the, the agency that was on the ground, when it didn't quite work out for them, they went off to another country in South America, uh, and then the, the, the projects in Liberia just, just kind of stopped. So, you know, those were a, a, a number of questions, I think, that are really valuable questions to ask. And I think there's one final question that actually was asked at the time. Um, the trip that we made was about $10,000. And as I was speaking to people and rolling them in this idea of, of going on, the, on this trip to, to Liberia, and I think about 25 of us went all together in the end. You know, one of the, person, one of the people I spoke to was absolutely horrified at the idea of spending $10,000 to do that. You know, her view was that she could spend maybe a thousand dollars and getting an airfare there and, and stay in hostels and, you know, uh, 
stays there super cheaply and spend you know, the other nine thousand dollars on you know enabling projects or investing in infrastructure or making a real hands-on difference on the ground so i don't know where all that money went uh, but what i do know it wasn't going directly into uh for the people that that we were there with you know for the 10 days or so that we were there so uh, as I say, I, I didn't really come into this conversation with a crystal clear view as to where I was going with it. I did want to share some of those questions with you that, that I've been reflecting on. And I do want to reflect on just a couple of more things as well. You know, one is that I, one of the debates I saw on Facebook recently is the best thing you can do to treat poverty is give money. And I just do not believe that. I don't think there's any evidence to, to say that that's true. You know, what I have seen firsthand and what I have seen with hindsight, what I've seen with other projects is giving money could make a difference, but it has to be done in the right way to help local people become self-sustaining, not to, to have learned helplessness. So that's, you know, something, some of the debate that I've come across recently. Uh, and yes, and my final point is, I, the more I think about this, the more I reflect on this, the more I look back to my role in this, the more I feel shame. I, I feel that powerfully right now that, you know, I have shared photographs, I have told stories about my experience in Liberia. And the key word, it was my experience. It wasn't their experience. It wasn't contributing to their, to their betterment, to, to their future. It was really about me. And, and I look back now and I feel shame for that.